Hey, how's it going guys and welcome back and today we're going to be uh, finally taking a look at my Windows 98 machine. Now as you can probably tell by this sticker on the front, this is not the first version of my Windows 98 machine. So yeah, this machine has gone through a lot of different versions. In fact, the only things that are still the same from the original build that I did uh, a long time ago now uh, is the motherboard, the RAM, and the CPU. Those are the only original things. As far as I can think, oh, the power supply is also the same. But everything else has been changed. So, yeah, we've gone, it's gone through a lot of different stages. But, I mean, at least it's now it's at a point where I'm more happy with it than I was initially. Now, now the history of this machine and all of its different versions really would deserve a video of its own because yeah it this the history of this machine has so much stuff to talk about it that i would have to do an entirely separate video about it uh without it taking up like a large chunk of this video so that's for a different time but for now we're just going to look at the hardware all right, so taking a look at the front of the computer, we have a 40-speed CD-ROM drive, an unknown speed CD-ROM drive that I think was made in 1998. Don't exactly remember. A 3.5-inch floppy drive, uh, the label I showed earlier, power button, reset button, and uh, power LED and hard drive LED. And, of course, in the bottom, we have our taped-on Windows 98 sticker. Now, as far as the case itself goes, I don't exactly know who made it. The sticker here does say ELS, but I have my doubts that this is the original factory label. You can clearly see it was just printed out on some sort of label maker, like I printed out this one with. Uh, and there's clearly supposed to be something bigger that goes in the square, so... I'm guessing it just fell off and they printed this out and put it on there. So we're just going to say this case is made by ELS. So the sides of the case don't really have anything except beautiful whitish beige. And there's some vents along the side here. But other than that, both the sides are very boring. On the back of the computer, we have the power supply with an analog fan speed control, which is... Pretty interesting, but this power supply uh, has some other interesting things as well that we'll take a look at once we get inside the case. Got two PS2 ports, serial port, uh, parallel or LPT port, uh, SPDIF in and out for audio, onboard audio, inputs and outputs, a Firewire 400 port or uh, IEEE 1394. Four USB 2.0 ports and 10 100 uh, Ethernet. Down here we have a VGA port, S video port, and DVI port on the video card, a 15 port joystick port, and audio in and out on the sound card. Now, to get proper lighting inside the case is going to be very hard, so excuse the poor lighting so up here we have the power supply and this bar here covers up most of its interesting features and that is being that this power supply this 500 watt power supply i believe it's made by a company called mge is that it has blue led lighting and it has a side panel window the power supply has a side panel window. That's cool. I mean, I've never seen a power supply with a side panel window before this. It's a cool idea. And the blue LED lighting is kind of cool. Because it also, like, shines out the back some. And, like, if it's, like, near a wall, it'll, like, light up the wall. And it looks pretty cool. But, yeah. Of course, you don't get to really see it much. And the original case that this power supply was in... Also, it didn't have a side panel window or anything like that, so I don't know why they put it in there, but, you know, I'm not going to complain. 
So now we have all the good stuff. You know, the actual, the main system. So the motherboard that's in there, it's red, uh, is an 8-bit A17 motherboard. And let me tell you, it was hard finding the drivers for this. The, uh, as far as I can tell, 8-bit no longer exists. And, uh, yeah, so I couldn't find the official drivers for the motherboard, so I had to use Everest Home Edition to, uh, have it detect all the hardware. So I had to go get the chipset drivers from Intel, the, uh, Ethernet drivers from... Actually, I think I used a Dell driver for the Ethernet, and then the onboard audio I didn't bother with because we have our own dedicated sound card down here. Here is the CPU cooler, and it's one of these cool Zalman Sunflower style coolers that's extremely quiet. I am very impressed with how quiet it is, and uh, it keeps the CPU nice and nice and cold. Well, not cold, but very... It's, uh, well, let's just say it's better than my AMD stock heatsink. Let's just leave it at that. But of course, what are you going to put a heatsink on? Well, a lot of things, but in this case, we have it on our CPU, and, well, our CPU happens to be a Intel Pentium 4 with no hyper-threading running at 2.5 gigahertz. So you might be wondering, why would you use Pentium 4? Well, uh, there's really no reason to not use a Pentium 4 for Windows 98. Pentium 4s are extremely cheap. Uh, you can get them in so many different speeds. That and, like, Pentium 3s are really expensive nowadays. Like, getting a good Pentium 3 is really expensive nowadays, so it's not worth it. Just, just get a Pentium 4. Trust me, you'll be much happier with the performance anyways. And as far as the non-hyper-threaded part go, well, Windows 98 is not a multi-threaded operating system. So if you use it with a multi-core CPU, either the machine will refuse to boot fully into Windows, or it just will ignore the other core, or an, or if you had hyper-threading, the other thread. So yeah, there's no need for anything faster, really. It serves me quite well. Here we have our 60 gigabyte Hard drive, the only hard drive currently in the system. Uh, 60 gigs is plenty for right now. And uh, it's a Seagate hard drive that's a really high quality, actually. I believe I actually pulled this out of an E-Machines, which is really weird. Because it's really high quality. It has, like, sound dampening foam, like, under, like, a metal part, like a metal plate under it. It's It's weird, but cool at the same time. Under this giant mess of cables is uh, a gigabyte of DDR RAM running in dual channel mode, and uh, there's really no way to get a better shot of it, but they're just two 512 megabyte sticks of DDR RAM in the, in the motherboard. Moving these cables is near impossible, so you just have to live with it. Here we have our video card, which is an NVIDIA GeForce 4 TI-4200. Probably the GeForce 4 TI family, I highly recommend for Windows 98. It just works, it works with older games very well, and it also works with the newer games very well too. It's like the perfect sweet spot if you're looking for an NVIDIA card. If you're going for AMD, or well I guess at the time ATI, I heard the Radeon 8500 is pretty good, but this is just what I have. Uh, it works very well, and yeah, I couldn't be happier with it. It's a lot better than the other graphics cards I had tried out in the system. Now this black card down here is the uh, sound card, which is a Sound Blaster Live sound card. It's a very cool sound card, and uh, it has some pretty good MIDI on it, so yeah. And then this cable is connecting the top, the topmost CD drive to the sound card so it can pass the CD audio through to the output of the sound card. So yeah. And so down here we have the only fan for the case, which is acting as an intake. 
And so that brings me to my biggest problem with this case. That's the only fan mount, as I just said. There's no fan mount back here. You're wondering, why would they not put a fan mount back here? That's stupid. And it is. But that's because they wanted to put this admittedly nice mechanism in where if you undo an extra screw on the back once the case is off and you unplug all the cables, you can actually pull the entire motherboard tray with the expansion slots, the motherboard and stuff, pull it all the way out, which makes it very nice for, uh, you know, for building the system, but it, you hurt the airflow of the case because this area here has to be raised and there's no way to easily mount a fan here. So the only thing that exhausts heat out of the back of the case is the power supply. So the power supply's air actually gets really warm and I have to leave the fan control at max just so I feel more comfortable. And it sucks because I'm worried that the power supply is eventually going to overheat and it's going to kill itself because, you know, it's it's getting suffocated. Well, or well not suffocated, but at least it's having more heat go through it than it would normally have to. Yeah. And I'm just worried about it, you know, but it hasn't died yet, so I guess it's okay, but it still doesn't make me feel good, and I kind of want to change out the case, and I might even go back to the original case. I'll talk more about uh, maybe some future plans for the system at the end of the video. But now would actually be a good time to get into the software aspect of this computer, you know, look at the Windows 98 install, see how some of the games run on it, and, well, give you my uh, final thoughts on it and maybe some future plans for it. All right, let's go ahead and turn on the computer. Hopefully it's not too loud. Uh, that front case fan is a little bit on the loud side. All right, floppy seat. Uh, sorry for the quick flicker that you might see because uh, the monitor is running at 70 hertz instead of 60 right now but uh, yeah as you can see I just set up this little like startup menu really quick uh, using tweak UI 98 and uh, this is just makes it easier so I don't have to mash F8 if I need to get into safe mode or something so there we go again sorry about the flickering that won't be it's only for this initial portion And as you can see, I am running the unofficial Service Pack 3. That's why it says second edition there, because I had to change that. And uh, this computer sometimes can take a while to boot up. It sometimes depends, and uh, should be at login now. Yep. There we go. And no more screen flicker, although it actually flickers more in real life than it does on the camera. Yeah, 60 hertz on a CRT doesn't look the best. Oh no, it's going to find my monitor, because I guess I haven't used this monitor on here in a while. That's... And there we go, it's booted up. Uh, it's still loading in stuff. Uh, it's got to load in Clamwin antivirus, and then it's pretty much done. Now, this mouse sucks. Wow. I have not used this mouse in forever. This sucks. <laughs> My Logitech PS2 mouse is so much better. Alright, so... Yeah, so, uh, so... Yeah, wow, this must, mouse really sucks. Jesus. I guess we'll live with it. And so, uh... Yeah, so, uh, as you can see here, this is my computer. Now you got your floppy drive, your, uh, the hard disk, which we can actually take a look at how much we're using. And, uh, we're only using, uh, 9.29 gigabytes. Can't really see it too well. Well, there you can kind of see it. It's not going to focus very well, but there, 9.29 gigabytes. And, uh... We have the two optical drives, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Wow, this mouse does not like moving to the left. I am... Wow. Ugh. Sucks. 
suck so much. So, of course, the main aspect of this computer is the games. And this is the games folder. And uh, first we're going to take a look at the sort of flagship game for this computer. And that is Star Wars Pod Racer, or Star Wars Episode One Racer, however you like to call it. Uh, getting this game to run on anything past Windows 9X can be difficult because you need a patch. And then actually finding a video card that will actually run it correctly is also pretty hard. When I mean by run it correctly, I mean it run without like a bunch of stutter and stuff. And I'm going to have to turn on the speaker so that way, uh, you know, I don't get destroyed for copyright because it is Star Wars music. And uh, you can probably hear the CD drive there. It's pretty loud, as most CD drives are. Again, it is a 40 speed. I'm using the 40 speed one, so let's get past the FMVs. Yep, single player. You can see it's, and uh, this video is in 60 FPS. The monitor is running at 60 FPS, so you're seeing all the possible frames we can right now. And I do have the game maxed out at max settings, max resolution, all that, all that fun stuff. He plays Mars Goo because he is the best racer, or at least my favorite racer. Because uh, he has some pretty good upgrades. And, uh, I mean, look at the size of those engines. Yeah, so... I'm sure the game's running faster than 60 FPS. Just we can't see it. And I don't have, like, fraps or anything on here, so... I guess we'll never know. Although... You have to admit, this is... Oh, almost... Yeah. Actually, I could probably turn up the audio now, because, uh... No. Might have been too loud. <laughs> Alright. Okay, let, let, let's not play with the audio, because... It seems like when I turn on the audio, I suck. So... Yeah, but this game runs very smoothly. There's pretty much no stutter at all. But yeah, this game runs perfectly. I mean, it has some graphical oddities, but that happened on every graphics card I could test with it. Like, some of the textures were kind of warping around in some areas, but again, that happened on, like, three different generations of NVIDIA card happened on a Matrox card, so I don't, it's not exclusive to this graphics card. So yeah. So that's Star Wars Pod Racer as I die there. Uh, we're gonna quit the game, turn up the audio again, and so yeah, that's sort of like the main, the main game. Uh, I also have The Sims on here. Although I don't know where that disc is right now, so we're not going to be taking a look at that. I do have a copy of Roller Coaster Tycoon, but I don't know. I'm pretty sure what most people pretty sure most people know what Roller Coaster Tycoon looks like. Uh, what else is there? Well, I guess we can just go ahead and skip ahead to a much more demanding game. That's the original Star Wars Battlefront. Yes, I know this is an XP era game. But I don't have an XP machine up and running yet, so uh, I just decided to install it on the 98 machine just to uh, test it out. This 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 I'm sorry, this game actually comes on three CDs and actually fell over. Whoa! <laughs> All right, going to insert disc one, which is the disc that lets you play. Go in. There we go. Oh, another Star Wars game, so I have to turn on my audio. Yeah. Alright. I turned down the audio, so... And Wow, I have a lot of Star Wars games. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. You know, you're gonna start the game? Yep. 
There we go. Oh no, it's not running at 60 hertz anymore. What? 63 hertz? What's this? 63 hertz? What kind of a thing is that? Oh, wait, that's 63 kilohertz. Vertical sync. Oh, it's at 100 hertz now. Whoops. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because it's running at 800 by 600, so the resolution bumped up. Yeah, so for... This game doesn't run great on this computer. Uh, I just told it to do auto-detect and uh, puts it at 800 by 600. These at, like, the middle. Turns everything, like, medium or low. So, yeah. Let's just go ahead here and jump into a game real quick. Instant action. Let's see here. Uh, do Hoth. I think Hoth runs fairly well on this computer. <coughs> wow, my my throat is still like dead. I was sick for a while and now I'm still sick, I guess. Wow, that is flickery. I'm sorry. Don't look. Let's pick the scout trooper because that's the best one. Wow, that's that's really flickery. Uh, let me see if I can do something about that. Okay, so. We're going to try to not look too much at the ground. Because, wow, that's that's really flickery. I'm sorry, guys. That's I feel really bad. But, yeah, this the game runs reasonably okay, but, like, it's not that great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're going to we're gonna just kill a guy here and, uh... Come on. <laughs> and I'm dead. Oh, I'm not dead. <laughs> How did I survive that? Boom. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Alright. Okay, the screen's not as flickery now. <clears throat> oh, my throat. Jesus, I'm still sick. Alright, let's head over... No, wait, all the rebel stuff is over here. Yeah, but the game runs reasonably okay at this resolution. As you can see, the sky is all black, and that's like that in every level. Um, I've never seen this game play on anything else, so I don't know if just it doesn't render the sky texture if there's no, uh, if there's no, uh, you know, if the video card isn't as good. But otherwise, I don't know. Because there's no sky texture at all. And there's no sky textures in any level, so I don't know if that was just... The developers didn't add sky textures for the first game, or if there was just, or you know, if the graphics card just sucks for this game. Oh no. Getting hit. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. I mean, this runs. Oh, oh god. Come on, die. Eh. Eh. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so this game runs pretty well. Or pretty good. However you want to English that. Uh, this mouse really sucks. I'm not kidding. Like, it just, it doesn't want to move to the left most of the time. Yeah. Alright, so the monitor's playing hard to get. Now we're getting this rolling bar. And I went ahead and changed the resolution to 1024 by 768 just so you can see the screen a little bit better. <clears throat> God. Uh, but you may have noticed this. Minecraft.exe. Yes, I got Minecraft to work on here. It took a long time to get it finally working, but it actually runs pretty reasonably. And I'm going to show you how I did that. Well, not how I got Minecraft on here, but how I get it to run good. Well, whatever. Curse you, bar. Yeah, it, it was doing so good before, and now it, it's doing this. Is it... Is it loading? Oh, no, does it want internet? Aw, oh, crap. Didn't find an update in time. Starting launcher. Uh, yeah, I bet it wants internet. I've played this offline before, though. I know I have. 
you're looking for updates. You don't need the update. Come on. You're not going to update anything anyways. Packing. Starting launcher. Come on. Do it. Yeah, it's not accessing the hard drive at all. So, yeah, it it really wants internet. Oh my god, really? Alright, so I brought the system back inside. Uh, it's plugged into Ethernet now. Let's hope that Minecraft will actually start. I could have swore I ran this without internet before. See, I mean, it's not down... It, I'm not gonna download any updates. It doesn't. It shouldn't need to connect to the internet. It is still accessing the hard drive, and there we go. Play off. It see. It gave me the option to play offline. Like, what? All right. So I'm running Minecraft 1.2.5, a pretty old version of Minecraft, but that seems to run the best. Because if you pick an older version of Minecraft, it seems to run better, which kind of makes sense. And yeah, there we go. It's loading up. And make it go full screen. Video settings. And because it just press F11. There we go. Yeah, but uh, you can see. Uh, that's my survival world. So yeah. All right. So as you can see, it runs reasonably well and as you can hear audio actually does work the audio does work and uh, it's quite loud but uh, yeah that's because I have I pretty much have all the settings set to low but uh, still this is pretty impressive for hardware from like 2000 to 2003 running on an even older operating system so yeah I had to bring in this whole machine just to show you like a minute of Minecraft gameplay I hate my life so what are my final thoughts on the machine well it's in a pretty good state as it is now it works uh, it runs pretty much all the games I have reasonably well for what you would expect the hardware to. And overall, it's a pretty good Windows 98 machine. But there are some things I'd like to change. Uh, first of all, I'd like to change the sound card. Now, I said the Sound Blaster Live is a great sound card, and don't get me wrong, it is. But uh, I have an all real Vortex 2 that I'd love to put in this machine. But uh, I just I haven't gotten around to it. Uh, I'd also like to start messing around with virtual CD drives with like daemon tools and then ripping the ripping my game CDs with uh, with uh, like alcohol 120% so uh, that way I don't have to carry around my stack of games everywhere I go look at this I have to carry around that everywhere I go anytime I bring this anywhere and uh, that gets annoying and you know that's like a very small portion of games I, there's still a lot of gay games I still want to get, and, you know, that stack's just going to keep growing, so uh, having a virtual CD drive would, uh, and just ripping the CDs, making images of them, be really good. And the Algorithm Vortex 2 also does play port, uh, a part in that, uh, because the SB Live only has a VXD driver, and if you want CD audio, you need a WDM driver for your audio card, or your, your sound card, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so, uh, Narva Vortex 2 has a WDM driver. I couldn't find one for the Sound Blaster Live, so that's also another reason why I'd want to change it out. Uh, I'd also like to upgrade the hard disks eventually in here as well, because the 60 gig drive is fine now, but if I'm going to be messing around with virtual CD drives, ripping CD images, you know, a CD is 700 megs, about, about there, you know, Battlefront has three CDs, so that's like over like one and a half gigs there, you know. 
you have these, which are probably only like maybe a couple hundred megs are on here. But you know, still, that'll still add up. So I'd like to add bigger hard disks. Uh, not gonna go solid state yet because uh, the motherboard does have SATA ports on it and I could put a SSD in here. However, I've had issues with Windows 98 detecting it before. Uh, I'm gonna have to look into that, but anyways, for right now, it's, this is fine. So, yeah, so I'm happy with it right now. I'd also like to change the case, like I said, not having a proper fan in the back really bothers me in terms of how long the power supply is gonna last in there. And so, uh, yeah. So I'd like to maybe move it back to its original case, and I've thought about, since the original case is black, painting it, painting it some, like, really cool, like, 90s, like, neon colors, like, neon greens and pinks and purples, like you'd see on, like, a Nickelodeon or something. Give it that real true, true 90s look. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the 98 machine. And it's not dead like the DOS machine. Uh, but the DOS machine rebuild is coming. Parts are on their way for it, so... Uh, stay tuned for that. So uh, anyway, have a nice day, and uh, see you in the next video.